Hello everyone. Uh, in the last class, we discussed how to determine the magma stiffness matrix of a truss. Okay. What we do today is we will see, we will compute the member stiffness matrix through an example, compute the stiffness matrix for different members and then how those stiffness matrices are uh, need to be assembled to get the global stiffness matrix. Okay. Now, mm, so today's uh, topic is uh, global stiffness matrix. Uh, recall this is the last class we discussed, if we take uh, an element, any arbitrary element of truss, uh, which has these are the degrees of freedom and then mm, these are the degrees of freedom corresponding degrees of freedom and then the element then the element stiffness matrix with respect to which which relates the global load vector which is with the global displacement degrees of freedom with respect to the deformation forces defined in global coordinates as this and lambda x lambda y at this ok now so mm, let us take this example that is the example we started our discussion now uh, if you recall they these are the three members forces and uh, corresponding degrees of freedom at each joint and then we have uh, three members separately and then this is the global coordinate system and then these are the joint coordinates if we this angle is 60 degree and these are the ok. Now what we do is we will try to find out what is the stiffness matrix global stiffness matrix for this uh, for this problem for this truss with three members ok. The reason why we chose a very simplified problem because all the calculations here I have to show you different steps uh, so that the number of if the number of members are very large probably it will be difficult to show all the steps in a great detail. Uh, so, for, for three members we will be showing all the calculations everything manually, but uh, really we do not do it manually for a large structure we will see how to do the similar operations using computer code. Okay. Now, uh, towards the end of this discussion, uh, um, okay. so this is the element stiffness matrix. So, let us take, so in element stiffness matrix what we need is we need lambda x and lambda y, lambda x is uh, theta x is the theta x is how this is with res, we, how it is y, uh, with the x axis and theta y is how it is uh, how it is how it is how this is oriented with respect to vertical direction vertical direction this, this is theta y ok. Now, so but probably the expression that we derived that the that was we only took one theta and instead of theta y we define lambda y as sin theta. So, both are same ok. Now, so um, for this member we have to create a table where the member numbers different members numbers we have the different members numbers and i j for different member number you see recall the last we have this is the i th node and this is j th node ok. And then we have the stiffness this is stiffness matrix for this. Now, for depending on the, the member the i and j are different for different members. For instance, for member number 1 i is node number 3 and j is node number 1. So, i is node number 3 and j is node number 1 ok. So, we are moving from this direction to this direction ok. Now, for member 2 your i is say 2 and j is 1. So, we are moving from this to this direction. The reason why I am telling moving from this to this direction the reason why an i and the identification of i and j not the identification the definition of i and j I could have taken i for this member i as this and j as this, but only thing is whatever i and whatever j we take we need to compute the angle accordingly that is it ok. So, similarly for this member i is 3 and j is 2 ok. So, if we do that now lambda x which is defined as a this which is essentially theta cos theta x and sin theta y or cos theta and sin theta uh, this becomes for different i. Now, if we take i is a sep the opposite means if I take i is this and j is this only difference will be your sign of this uh, sign of these values ok. Now, so that flexibility we have. But as far as the numbering is concerned, this numbering con concern, it is a three member, only three nodes we have, the numbering is very straightforward. 
but for a larger structure where you have the many number of nodes, many number of members, the numbering is not very arbitrary. I told you in the last class as well. Numbering has to be done in such a way that the at the end of the, the matrix that you get, uh, the matrix gets the banded matrix. That what is the banded matrix? We'll discuss that. Okay. So once we have comp once we know what is the angle of uh, orientation of different members, then we can just substitute this lambda x and lambda y for uh, for um, for different member to get the stiffness matrix. Okay. Now, in this case, uh, uh, and another another important thing is for for this problem, we assume that uh, we assume that area area a area Young's modulus and length are same for all the members, but if they are not same, then then we have to we have to consider for a the, for a given member when we calculate the stiffness matrix, we have to consider the area Young's modulus and length of that particular member. If area Young's modulus then the same for all member, it is same. Usually, will area and Young's modulus in many problem that we come across, area and Young's modulus may be same, or at least Young's modulus will be same. And area and length are different for different members, and that you have to that we have to take care of. Okay, so then once we substitute that this then we get the stiffness matrix element stiffness member stiffness matrices for different member as this okay now you recall that uh, member 1 was th th if this is the if i draw this once again here this was the member 1 this was member 2 and this was member 3 and uh, probably this was 1 degrees of freedom 1 and then 2 and then this is 3 4 th this is 3 4 and this is probably 5 and 5 and 6 so member number 1 member number 1 join member number 1 which has joined uh, jo which has which connects degrees of freedom 1 2 and 5 6 okay so member number 1 has 1 2 and 5 6 similarly member number 2 where we have degrees of freedom 1, 2 and 3, 4. So, we have degrees of freedom 1, 2 and 3, 4. Now, again recall uh, for member number 1, member number 1 i is equal to this point, this was node number 1, this was node number 1, node number 2 and node number 3. So, for this member we have i is this and j is this. So, when we write this stiffness matrix, this block is for ith node, this block is for jth node. Okay. So, and this block is for 2 degrees of freedom at ith node, this is 2 degrees of freedom at jth node. So, since i is 3 and j is 1 for member number 1 and the corresponding degrees of freedom at, at, at this point is 5, 6 and then at this joint is 1, 2. So, the elements will be here 5, 6 and then 1, 2. So, if I if I this is so this is I for and this is J for first member. So, this is I, this is I and this is J for first member. Similarly, second member we took I is equal to 2 and J is equal to 1. So, I is equal to I is equal to 2 and J is equal to 1. So, it will be so, this is i and this is j, i means th degrees of freedom 3, 4, degrees of freedom 3, 4, j means degrees of freedom 1, 2, degrees of freedom 1, 2 and here also i and j and similarly here it is 3 and it is 3 and 2. So, degrees of freedom 5, 6 and 3, 4. So, similarly degrees of freedom 5, 6 and 3, 4. So, this is i, this is j, this is i and this is j for this member. So, getting members once we have this expression, this expression, this expression, getting stiffness matrix for different member is very straightforward. We calculate what is lambda x, first define what is i and j for different members and from that calculate lambda x and lambda y and substitute lambda x and lambda y and area length and Young's modulus for, 
for different members in this expression and get the stiffness matrix for all the members. Okay. Now, once we have the stiffness matrix for all the members, the next step is we have to assemble the stiffness matrix. Okay. We have to connect the stiffness matrix and how it, this is a very important step. Uh, let us do that. Now, you see another thing which is very obvious in this case. Uh, if we look at the element stiffness matrices, then the size of the element stiffness matrices are uh, are four by four matrices because every element, every member, we have only four degrees of freedom to act it joins. Now, but these are for element member stiffness matrix. Now, if we if we look at the entire structure globally, then in this problem at least we have three nodes at every node six degrees of two degrees of freedom. So total six degrees of freedom. So essentially, the global stiffness matrix will be uh, the size of the global stiffness matrix will be six by six in this case. But if you have a different problems, the size of the element stiffness, size of the global stiffness matrix will depend on the number of joints we have in a problem. But irrespective of anything, the member stiffness matrix, the size of the member stiffness matrix will always be 4 by 4. Okay. Now, so let us let us find out. So, what we do is suppose, suppose these are the elements, these are the stiffness matrix. Now, suppose this is our stiffness matrix for uh, we do not know what is the value of the stiffness matrix yet, but what we do is we now identify it these are the uh, these are the um, uh, these are our node degrees of freedom 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this is for essentially node number 1 and this is node number 2, node number 2 and node number 3, node number 1, 2 and 3. Okay. Now, so, uh, we have three joints, we have uh, three joints. So, this joint is for this joint is this joint is joint number 1, this joint is joint number 2 and this joint is joint number 3. Similarly, this is joint number 1, this is joint number 2 and this is joint number 3. Okay. So, if we talk about this block, this block, this block tells you how, how this how the joint one number one, the, the relation between joint number one, how the force at joint number one and the force and the displacement and joint number one, how they are related to each other that is this block. Similarly, force at joint number one and displacement and joint number two related through this block. Similarly, force at joint number two and displacement and joint number one related to this block and so on. Okay. Now, first what we do is we first put all the values at 0. Okay. This is a very important step because when we, uh, when we, uh, when we do it first this is an initialization of the stiffness matrix. Okay. We assume all the values of the stiff one what we know is we know the size of the stiffness matrix here is 6 by 6 and then all the components all the elements of the this global stiffness matrix we make them 0 and then we see what joints are interacting with each other how the joints different joints are interacting with each other and take that particular value and substitute in the global stiffness matrix okay now so first take joint number 1 and joint number 1 you see Joint number 1 and joint number 1 is this is joint number okay here also we can write here also we can write so this is joint number 1 uh, this is joint number 1 and 3 4 this is joint number 2 this is joint number 2 sorry mm. this is joint number 2 and this is joint number 2 uh, this is joint number 2 this is joint number 2 and joint number 3 is 5 6 joint number 3 is 5 6 joint number 3 it is joint number 1 and joint number 1 joint number 3 is 5 6 joint number 3 is 5 6 okay now so 1 1 1 1 1 1 we have this is this is 1 1 this block is 1 1 and then we have this block is 1 1 this block is 1 1 
Okay. Now, when, when we assemble them, then this, this value will be this block plus this block. Okay. And uh, if we do that, then this becomes, so 1 by 4, this is 1 by 4, 1 by 4 here and 1 by 4 here becomes half and then root 3 by 4 minus root 3 by 4 becomes 0 and then 3 by 4, 3 by 4 becomes 3 by 2 and minus 3 by 4, 3 by root 3 by 4 becomes 0. Now, what does it, what does it physically mean? Again, go back to our uh, second week when we discussed the um, basic concept of displacement method. If you remember, what we did is we we then apply the equilibrium kind once we have the forces and displacement relation for each member separately and then we at the time of assembling them at the time of joining them we we apply the equilibrium equation at every joints isn't it and how this equilibrium equation we apply we apply the force at this joint should be equal to the force at this force at this force from one component and the force from force from another component when they are joining together the total force will be this plus this it is essentially a, 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 it is essentially the same thing we are doing here okay so this is done so next see joint number the next joint is joint next which is joint number 1 and joint number 2 joint number 1 and joint number 2 is they are they joint number 1 here and there is no join number 2 here, join number 1 here and join number 2 here. So, let us use different color. So, join number 1 and join number 2 here and there is no join number and join number 2. So, join number 1 and join number 2 becomes 1, 1 and 2 become this. So, this becomes this is this is minus 1 4 minus 1 by 4 root 3 by 4 root 3 by 4 root 3 by 4 root 3 by 4 and minus 3 by 4 and then minus 3 by 4 okay there is no other joint number 1 and 2 joint joint 1 and 2 is interacting with each other only in this member okay now let's join number 1 and join number 3 join number 1 and join number 3 is we do not have any join number 1 and join number 3 here. So, join number 1 and uh, okay. So, then what will happen? Your this becomes this become this join number 1 and join number 3. Uh, where is join number 2? Join number 1, join number 1 here and then Three, four, five, six. Oh, here yeah, it is. It is not three. Uh, it is. Uh, that's why uh, this is join. This is join number three, right? Okay. So join number one and join number three interact interact here. So this interaction becomes. Uh, if we take this becomes join number. This is join number three. This is join number three, right? Yeah. So this becomes join number one and join number three become this. So, this is minus 1 by 4, minus 1 by 4, minus root 3 by 4, minus root 3 by 4, root 3 by 4, root 3 by 4 and then minus 3 by 4, minus 3 by 4. So, this gives us how joint number 1 is related to various other different other joints. Let us now look at this block. This block, this block is how joint number, how joint number 1 and joint number 2 is related. Joint number 1 and joint number 2 related here. So, this becomes, so this becomes join number 1 and join number 2 is this, 2 and 1 is this, again the same thing we can have, we can go back, yes. So, it is essentially the same thing here. So, this, 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 this. Okay. Now, similarly, we can have join number 2 and join number 2, join number 2, join number 2 related, related here like this. You see join number 2 and join number 2 is here and join number 2 
width join number 2 is this is this. So, it will be this this plus this. So, it will be 1 by 4 plus 1 means 5 by 4 then root 3 by root minus root 3 by 4 minus root 3 by 4 and then 3 by 4 3 by 4. Okay. So, next is then join number 2 with join number 3 join number 2 and join number 3 becomes this join number 2 and join number 3 is this and then we have join number 1 and join number 3 join number 1 and 3 they are they relate here join number 1 and join number 3. So, this is this becomes this. So, this becomes minus 1 by 4, minus 1 by 4, minus root 3 by 4, minus minus 3 by 4, minus 3 by 4 here and then minus root 3 by 4, minus root 3 by 4 here. Okay. Now, next is your uh, join number 3 and join number 2. So, join number 3 and join number 2, join number join number 3 and join number 2 is this or this same value. So, this is same and finally, join number 3 and join number 3, join number 3, join number 3 is join number 3, here we have join number 3, interact with join number 3 and then join number 3, interact with join number 3. So, this become, so this becomes 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 4, plus 1 5 by 4 then root 3 by 4 and then 0 root 3 by 4 root 3 by 4 0 root 3 by 4 and then finally, 3 by 4 and then 3 by 4. So, this then you will look at this all the blocks that we have we considered and then this is assembled in a global stiffness matrix form. So, this is our global stiffness matrix we have A e by L here A e by L here this is the global stiffness matrix. Okay. Now, so once we have this global stiffness matrix, so um, yes, so this becomes the global stiffness matrix. Okay. Now, once we have the, the same, same exercise we can do for any, any other class member, essence remain same, procedure remain same. But the assembling stage is the very important stage and where we can do it for manually, we can do it manually for this simple problem, but really we cannot do it for large problem. So, assembling and all everything we can do it using computer, using computer codes, but the essence remain same. So, once we have these elements global stiffness matrix, then what this global stiffness matrix does is this. So, we have total forces P 1, P 2, P 3, P 4 and then P 5 and then P 6 okay. and corresponding displacement we have or the degrees of freedom we have U 1, then we have U 2, U 3, U 4, U 5 and U 6. And this global stiffness matrix relates this. Elements stiffness matrix like a member stiffness matrix K1, K2, and K3. K1 relate 1, 2, 5, 6, K2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and K3 relates 3, 4, and 5, 6. But when we assemble them all, then we get the global stiffness matrix which relates the forces and the displacement defined with respect to global coordinate system. Now, once we look at the stiffness, what are the information we need to calculate the stiffness matrix? We need only the geometry and the info information about the geometry because the length and the area is required and also we need information about the material property because the Young's modulus is required. So, this stiffness matrix does not depend on what are the load you are applying on the structure, what are the boundary conditions, it depends only on the geometry and material of this structure. So, based on that geometry and material, we calculate the stiffness. So, the stiffness matrix, it is the property of a given structure. So, 
if we take a two same structure subjected to different kinds of load their response may be different their response different because they are subject to different kinds of load but the stiffness matrix if the geometry and monetary property configuration everything same the stiffness of may of this structure remain same irrespective of the applied load we are giving on this structure or the at least the load that we are considering in this analysis okay now next is once we have the stiffness matrix the next is two another information we have to we have to give here we have already given the information about the material property we are given the information about the we have given the information about the uh, geometry now other two information required information about the boundary condition and information about the forces next what we do is we will see how to apply these boundary conditions okay you see out of we have 6 degrees of freedom here okay but actual structure actual structure means the structure that we started with the structure was like this if you recall the it where it was a hinge support and it was a roller support right and then it is subjected to a force something like this a force like this okay so naturally since it is hinge support u5 and u6 u5 and u6 this has to be zero u6 has to be zero isn't it and then since it is roller support so u4 has to be zero u4 has to be zero so this is zero this is 0 and this is 0. So, that we know from the boundary conditions. Then essentially we have to solve for u 3, u 1 and u 2. So, we have to solve for 3 unknown, but now so essentially the matrix is 6 by 6 matrix in this case, but really we do not have to solve for entire 6 by 6 matrix. We have to solve only for 3 unknown because other 3 unknowns are known. Okay which is 0 here or it may be any other specified value at a given joint. So, we will see next is how these boundary conditions to be enforced in this. Uh, this is enforced in the structure and once I write this the force displacement relation, this is the mathematical uh, representation of the structure. Now, in this mathematical representation is incomplete this representation because we have not as of now we have not given the information about the boundary condition and the forces. Next class we will see how to give this information in this expression and, and, then, and then how to solve for the uh, rest of the unknown. So, I stop here today another thing that you can try uh, before coming for the next class. You remember in the last uh, 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 some time back I told you the stiffness matrix. If you take this stiffness matrix, the this six by six stiffness matrix, and find out the uh, find out the you try to find out the solution by solving these six this six equations. You will see that you cannot find out because this stiffness matrix is singular stiffness matrix. Even in the truss, even in the element member stiffness matrix, if you take separately and see what is the determinant of the member stiffness matrix, you will find that stiffness matrix determinants are 0. So, uh, this is and I told you that you put a star mark here, we will discuss that point uh, the interpretation of physical interpretation of that, that point later, will this is the time to discuss that. So, next class what you do is first we start our discussion why the stiffness matrix the singular stif stiffness matrix is singular and then how to give the boundary conditions and then once we give the boundary conditions what form of the stiffness matrix uh, take and then subsequently how to solve them okay stop here today see you in the next class thank you